Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. If we can get this over 150 likes, that would genuinely be fantastic. Right, we're going to do a quick question of the day before we jump into things. Um, let me see what we got here. Biggest winning margin you've ever seen in an FM? Um, I think it has to be when we were with, I think it was with Red Star, when we played that team from either Luxembourg or Liechtenstein. I can't remember exactly which team it was. Um, and I think we beat them with something like 23-0 on aggregate. Uh, there was an 11 in there and a, a 9. I can't remember exactly what the scores were. If you do know, then please do let me know. But that's definitely the biggest winning margin I've seen. Um, certainly seen my team to be involved in. Um, I don't think I've seen any others that were quite as bad as that. But yeah, that's my... Um, if you, What's the biggest winning margin you've seen? If you've got any screenshots, do drop them in the comments. I'd be very interested to see them. And of course, if you do have any ideas for a question of the day, drop them in the comments with the hashtag QOTD. Right. Um, it is the day of the Champions League draw. Now, as you can see, we did go through, albeit a little bit more... Um, um, yeah, not quite how I'd expected us to, basically. Um, it was a bizarre game that took a while to get going, but once it did, it really got going. So Anil Kapkin actually gave uh, Besiktas the lead on 30 minutes. Now, we did flip it around, though, and that's the key thing here. Giuseppe Di Laurentiis and Geronimo Garcia on the hour mark made it 2-1 to Roma. And at this point, 2-1. Yeah, that's fine. That made it, I think it was 5-1 on aggregate at that point. Unfortunately, Galatasaray, uh, not Galatasaray, sorry, apologies, Besiktas woke up at that point um, and scored three goals in five minutes to bring the tie back to 5-4 on aggregate and 4-2 uh, on the night. Thankfully, in their sort of, you know, our, our counter-attacking style worked perfectly after that. We got caught out there, fair enough, but once that happened... It kind of just left. They left the door open. We caught them on the break with De Laurentiis. And then finally again through Marcelo Di, Palac uh, Di Placido scoring his second goal for the club. Two goals, two games. Perfect start for him. Now, um, we, yeah, so we are through by four goals. Uh, sorry, seven goals to four on aggregate, which is a fantastic scoreline overall. Um, now, our first group game is here. Uh, in the next, well, which is going to be the live comment today's episode, our first Champions League group game, because we've actually got quite a few games in between that and the next one. So I figured, you know, we'll do that. So we'll do that one, then we'll do that one, then we'll skip that one and do that one. And you know how it works. And then we'll, yeah, because um, I don't want to do too many, but <coughs> it does depend on who we get, of course. Right. So let's go and take a gander. Uh, Champions League group stage draw is today. So let's go and have a little crack. Let's see who's in it. So top seeded teams. We've got PSG, Man City, Juventus, Napoli, Barca, Chelsea, Monaco, and Hoffenheim, of course. Hoffenheim are, of course, the reigning champions. So, you'd, you, you know, that's not surprising. Then it's Atletico, Marseille. Uh, that sounds like one team. Um, Real Madrid, Arsenal, Schalke, Bayern, Porto, and, of course, Norwich City. Um, I think we're in the bottom group, so that could be difficult. Oh, no, we're in the second, third group. Okay. Sampdoria, Stad Reim, Zenit St. Petersburg, Roma, Feyenoord, Metalist, Kharkiv, uh, Fenerbahce, and, of course, SK Rapid Vienna as well. So let's see who's in the bottom group. So Lech Poznan, uh, wow. Levski, Sofia, Metalog. I genuinely... Sorry, guys. I'm, there's some teams in here that I'm not familiar with. Metalog. Uh, I did hover over the name, didn't I? Yeah, sorry about this. I just, I'm always curious when these little things pop up. So Metalog. Zaporizh oh apology I'm sorry I can't if you don't know how, if you do know how that's pronounced then excellent um uh Zhezhar from Azerbaijan who I believe knocked us out um of the Champions League when we were in charge of Spartak Semi uh Penafeo of Portugal AELK of Greece uh interesting don't really know who they are either I also don't know why it's taking so long to load things but there you go um wow they've actually come up from the lower tiers in Greece it would seem um to do very, very well indeed. And also Basel and Standard Liège of Belgium. So this could be an interesting, some cool teams in it. Let's do this. So we're in the third pot. So it's going to be a tough one for us to get through, just like we were with Granada, I believe. So it's going to be massively difficult. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see. It's Hopefully we'll get one of the really, really poor sides. We've got guaranteed six points, but it's going to be a battle between us and the second place team, basically, isn't it? Uh, it's a question of which teams we want as the second place side. So let's see. Hoffenheim and Real Madrid. Ooh, tough. Juve and Schalke. Maybe. Chelsea and Atletico. No way. PSG and Arsenal. Probably don't want that either. Monaco and Norwich. That might be an interesting one. Norwich still haven't got a manager, I don't think. Napoli, Marseille. Barcelona, Porto. And Man City, Bayern. M Norwich, Monaco would be good. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, damn it. Atletico and Chelsea in our group. That is going to be stupidly difficult. Oh, my God. Monaco, Norwich, and Zenit in one group. Um, it's all about that third, t that fourth team. You know, if we get a relatively winnable one, I think they're all pretty winnable, but we'll just have to see. Uh, the poor the better, basically. We've got Levski Sofia of Bulgaria in our group. I think that should be two, two wins, relatively simple there. And there you go. Look at that group E with Zhezhar, um, 
Zenit St. Petersburg, Norwich, and Monaco. That is quite the group. Um, right, so... I will join you guys in a sec. Let's see who we're actually playing in that group. And it is still unknown. So, ooh, yeah, mystery and whatnot. So we've got away games at Udinese and Juventus coming up too to start the season off. Not exactly how I'd like to start. Um, if we could get three points against Udinese away, I'd be very happy, but I don't know. So I'll join you guys in a sec uh, when we come back and see if we've actually been able to do that. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Right, guys, we are back. And... Um, Turns out it was probably not a bad decision of mine to actually do this game uh, because firstly, it's the Chelsea game. And secondly, um, we had two games with Belgium in between. So I've actually had to play four matches, um, although five matches in this episode. So it's actually a reasonable length of time because we're actually into uh, the middle of September now due to the international break. So we're going to talk about uh, Roma stuff first. Then we'll go on to uh, Belgium before we get into today's game against Chelsea. Not going to overdo it because, of course, it will turn into such a long episode if we do that. Now, we actually started off away at uh, Udinese. I genuinely didn't expect us to win this, but look at this. We were brilliant. Genuinely fantastic. And who else to score the winner for us than Marcelo Di Placido with his third goal of the season already. So three games for us so far, three goals. He's been consistent isn't even the word he's been fantastic man of the match for that as well and a clean sheet to start things off nicely when you look at the back line of la mantia patenio aquina and alexandre you know to get a clean sheet away at udinese with that back line they've obviously got something about them it's just going to be a while before they can really realize that kind of ability um Q much, much later. We had a game against Juventus. We, we weren't able to win. Um, that being said, look at this. We really did hold our own in this match. To have 29 shots away from home against Juventus, 15 of which were on target. We actually hit the target more than them. Um, I was a little bit disappointed to lose to us. I think we were really, really good on the night and maybe a little bit unlucky at times. You know, we fell 2 0 down with two goals from Malcolm and I thought that was kind of it but we really really came into the game after that and it was such a shame uh, for that to happen two goals in first half stoppage time as well first Antonio Rubiano followed up with Marcelo Di Placido of course making it 3-1 now Going into the second half, we really did throw everything at them. And when Marcelo Di Placido scored his second of the night, fifth goal of the season already, 5-4 and four for us so far, um, I thought, hey, we're, this game's on. We really were starting to batten down the hatches, and unfortunately, it just... Uh, we got caught on the break and then ended up with a very irritating own goal from Brignoli. I don't think it should have been his goal. I actually thought that it probably should have been Malcolm's hat-trick, personally. But unfortunately, we did lose at Juve by four goals to two, but certainly looked a lot better than the last time we played Juve away. Um, that's one thing I will say. You know, We could have maybe even done even better in that. But let's take a little gander at Belgium now while we're here. Now, yet again, coming into the first game against Poland, I had a big headline. No, sorry, after the first game against Poland. Bear in mind, we won 3 1 uh, away at Poland. Poland were top of the group at this point, and they had a lot of shots off target uh, in this game. We did manage to get the victory in the end. Uh, Kali Chadley scoring for us before Marek Machai, uh, Machai equalised for Poland, but two goals for Gauthier Robert, making it. That's the most, that was the diffi most difficult game we had away in Poland, and we'd beaten it by three goals to one. You can't ask for anything more than that, really. Um, now, the issue was, going into the game against Luxembourg, I got a notification that said, Sack looms for Belgium manager. Yet again, it, I don't understand. There seems to be some weird disconnect between the international game and everything, because after this, um, you know you can hold a team meeting after you've done the international duty, and we've won every single game so far, apart from the Nations final. Um every single game in our European group and the only options I had in the team meeting was to tell them that we're on the verge of not qualifying and they all got pissed at me and I couldn't click anything I don't understand why there was no like well done guys you've won every fucking game like I don't understand that it really does need a lot of work as you can see against Luxembourg we were just dominant as you would expect 5-0 um, Robert Gauthier with with four goals in the game and one goal for Leander Dendonka as well Gauthier now has eight goals in qualifying in four matches uh, which makes him the top scorer in the entire Euro group eight goals already on the board at the top of our group we've got game in hands on the team below us as well despite being three points clear we're going to qualify comfortably um you know, it's looking like we've got away at Scotland, away at Luxembourg. The, we've done the hard part, basically. Everything is good from now on, really. I think that we're going to comfortably qualify for the Euros. In fact, I think we may even be able to win every game, which would be really, really good, to be honest. Uh, so let's just go back into Roma again and go to the squad. So um, we have a little bit more money now. Unfortunately, the money came through after the transfer window, which was useful. Uh, we got 5 million come through. Basically, they upped the amount that we were getting from our transfers from basically, I think it must have been at 5%, to 100 now, why wasn't it at 100 to begin with is what I want to know, because we had loads of money. So I'm very confused about that. So that's basically crippled us this year. Like, had we managed to have that 100% um, of transfer revenue, we'd have had like 30, 35 million to spend in the summer. And we really could have strengthened this team. As it is, though, we've got like 5 million now because we got like some claws through from a player that we sold to Tottenham a while ago, uh, which was a little bit annoying. Um, that 
Uh, we had to give a million of that to Zenit, but the fact is the money's come through. But we can't do anything with it at the moment. And um, hopefully next summer, though, we'll get a bit more of a budget. And if we do have to sell someone, we can actually spend some money for once. But top goal scorer so far is uh, Di Placido with five goals in four matches. Can't ask for more than that. Assist-wise, Garcia has two, which is fantastic as well. As for average rating, well, it's all about Di Placido with an 8.35 over four matches. Can't ask for more than that either. 21 million he's valued at. Um... Falcao isn't quite fully back yet, so he may miss today's game. But basically, that's how things are going at the moment. All looking rather scrumptious. Now, the issue is going to be, today away at Chelsea, we're going to have to play... Oh, wow, that's an interesting tactic, actually. They're playing a 3-4-1-2. Um, they're basically not even... They're not wingbacks. They are full-on... Oh, Pipoca. They're full-on midfielders. So this could be interesting. They do have the former Juventus goalkeeper, uh, Duran Duran, as I called him. Um, so this could be difficult. Uh, let's just see what we've got available to us. Ah, oh, right, good. Zifovic is finally fit again. Um, so, Di Placido, Caterini, Capra, Garcia, Falco is back. Not Falco. Falcao, Zivkovic. That's not. That's the strongest team we could probably put out at the moment, I have to say. I don't think we could get a stronger team out at the moment. Arapi, he's actually looked relatively okay in some games. He's still very inexperienced, so hopefully over time he will improve. Um, let's just do this. I don't think we're going to beat Chelsea today, but if we can nick a draw or something like that, that would be fantastic. Although we are clearly massive outsiders for this game, uh, to be honest. So that could be bad. Um, I don't really know who that is, as usual. Uh, so who have Chelsea got? They've got Dybala, Chukwuma, Matthew... Oh, that's uh, oh, one of our Belgian players. Fischer, uh, Alphonse, Alphonsinho, Yonvier... Is that Nicholas Yonvier? It is! Sorry, those of you who watch my Paris FC save will recognise this lad. Uh, wow, that's impressive to see him play for Chelsea. Uh, Leifer, Romagna, Pipoca, Vala, and of course Duran. Anyone? Oh, Isco on the bench as well. Is that Joel Campbell? Surely not. Jason Campbell. Uh, right, let's do this. Um, anything except an embarrassing defeat, really. I mean, Chelsea, I believe, are the top seed in this group. It's them and Atletico. I can't actually remember which order. We're just going to have to try and do our best to try and sneak into a second spot. But if not, we're going to get third, you'd feel. Which means we'll at least get a crack at the Europa League. And I think there's a chance that we could win that, personally, um, if we get third in our group. I think there's a real chance of us winning the Europa League, um, given the strength we've got. Oh! Oh, it's in the back of the net in the end, and Dybala's put it in. After just 53 seconds, we already trail. Paolo Dybala uh, makes it 1-0 to Chelsea, and that is the worst possible start to this match. They've, we've actually had 0% possession so far. They've not let us touch the ball on the goal. Disappointing. I thought we should have cleared our lines. There were several chances where we could have cleared it. There's four of them there, and they failed to make the changes. And, well, Dybala manages to put it in the back of the net. Chelsea won. Roma nil. Oh, God. I think we could be on the end of an absolute thumping here if we're not careful. Right. Win that header. Nope. Yonvier. Cleared away. Laffer. Oh, off the post. Right. Um, It is not looking good for us so far. Counter does not seem to be working. Chelsea are getting a lot of the ball. They're clearly an incredibly good side, and I think this could be a struggle for us today. But we're still only 1-0 down. Not entirely sure what changes to make just yet. Um, hmm. This could be really, really difficult. Oh, and there's the perfect... Albin Arapi. We're lacking in defence already, and to lose one of our bright young defenders is not a good start to this game. That's the first substitution out of the way as well, which is not wise. Um, I do think we're going to struggle today. If we can just keep the goals down a little bit, you know, if we're going to lose, at least try and lose 1-0 or something. Caterini, he's got... Oh, he's got... Oh, Di Placido. The one sort of threat we got is Di Placido. If we can get him into a good position and get him a, a shot, mate, maybe there's a chance for us. Caterini, Di Placido, and he's... Oh, he's missed it. Well, I say he's missed it. It was an absolutely fantastic save from Duran Duran. Di Placido should have scored there, really. That was the chance. Capra now. Can he whip a ball in? He does, but nobody's on the end of it. Should be won, though, by Caterini, but it doesn't matter because the highlight is done. Uh, Atletico are beating Levski Sofia by a goal to nil. We've at least offered something there, I suppose. So it proves that we can still do something in this game, but I don't know. I'm not too confident with it at the moment. Still only 1 nil though, and I think it should be a case of damage limitation. So perhaps being. You know, staying on counter for the rest of this match might be a wise decision, unless they start really thumping at us. Di Placido potentially on the overlap. Oh, he's lost the ball. Vara now. Watch Chelsea break. Long ball down the top. Dybala at least can't score from here. Uh, but he probably will whip this in and they'll score from the... Uh, ooh, Jerome Garcia should win this. Doesn't win it. We just look second to every ball. I don't know what Garcia's doing there, running off the pitch, but... Dybala will end up scoring on the end of this play now. Leif was all the way through, and I don't know what my goalkeeper... What is my goalkeeper doing there? Oh... Uh, what? Carlos Alexandre own goal? Um, okay, we're going to need to see this again, because I thought my goalkeeper should have picked this up. This touch is so heavy. Why is the goalkeeper backing away from the ball? And oh my god. Atomic face palm. What is with that? Why didn't the goalkeeper just pick the ball up? He's backing away from it when it's really close to him. It's stupid. 
Um, Chelsea 2, Roma 0. That, I'm really, that, that goal has very irritated me, frankly. Um, I, he's backing away from the ball when it's closer to him than it is to the player. All you have to do is work, take one step forward and pick it up. <sighs> right, okay. Um, that's a shocker. And the fact that it's an own goal as well doesn't make it any easier. Um, let's just see how we go in the second half. I might try and switch it to attacking to try and nick a goal. But at the moment, I just don't know whether we would have enough in the tank to try and get anything from this game now. Please, oh, wow, was that really not a chance? Okay. Um, Dybala now. Ball across, Matthew. Oh, my God, it's 3-0. Um, we're going to have to do something to try and get back into this game. Julian Matthew, well, we know how dangerous he was uh, or is for Belgium, but it's 3-0 to Chelsea. That is... Um, clearly, Chelsea have got something about them. They're obviously a very, very good side. Good touch from Matthew, and unfortunately, get straight past the, past the goalkeeper at the near post. Um, oh, I thought we were going to have Insta highlight there. Brignoli now. Carlos Alexandre. Um, not really... I mean, he is at fault because he put it in his own net, but the fact is the keeper should have easily saved it way before that. Caterini... Oh. We can't win a header. We just can't do anything at this game at the moment. This is all about Chelsea. Um, Carlos Alexandre, what are you doing? There's no, Just play it in there. We've got it on short. We, they're not even listening to the tactics anymore. Dybala now, and well blocked in the end. Uh, but it does look futile, any efforts. I might even try to get it on control rather than attacking. Just for a bit. Fisher's ball in. Cleared away well. And Caterini should be able to bring this away. Di Placido, is this going to be Di Placido's first game for us without scoring a goal? Garcia, can he play it to the channel? There's lots of space. Di Placido, he's got a man out wide. He's fouled by Romagna there. Um, I'm actually going to stick this on attacking still. Zivkovic with the strike, and it's in the back of the net. Okay. Chelsea 3, Roma 1. Surprising, but Andrea Zivkovic has got a goal for us. Um, it's the first player that scored for us that isn't Di Placido in quite some time, so we'll take it. It's a good free kick, but it is quite central, and Duran Duran should have done a lot better with that. But it is a goal back for Roma. Probably didn't really deserve it, but we've got it nonetheless. Um, let's just see what else we've got in the tank. Oh, he just... Oh, hello. Di Plac oh. He's got a good turn of pace about him as well. Di Bala's in all kinds of space now. Plays it in for Matthew, and this is surely four. Off the post, and it's cleared away. Um, we are fighting a losing battle. It's either going to end like 5-1, or we're going to get a goal. And I think it... Since Chelsea... It's down to head-to-head, -head, and Chelsea is not really that important because I think they're going to win this group. So it's important for me to try and oh, see if we can vaguely snatch something from this, but I just don't think that's even within the realms of possibilities. Um, I would like to see Di Placido nick a goal at some point, though, just to keep that ridiculous run of goal scoring he's got uh, going a little bit longer. You know, he's got five goals in his first four matches for us. He's scored in every single game so far. I'd like to see if he can carry it on. Oh, and it's in the back of the net from the rebound. Of course, it's in the back of the net from the rebound. What is it ever not? Um, that being said, that wasn't exactly a particularly dodgy one. It was just a rebound. It wasn't like it was those annoying set-piece ones. Chelsea are just so good at the moment. Uh, amazingly, Levski and Sofia are drawing with Atletico, so perhaps Atletico aren't as strong, or, alternatively, Levski are a lot stronger than we thought they were. That is another option. Uh, Insta-highlight. Now, this could be bad. I hope this isn't a fifth goal, because we might have to switch it back to counter if they score a fifth, just to try and soak up some pressure. Zivkovic is given a lot of space here. Don't let's let him shoot from range. He's going all the way in, and that's a horrific effort when he would have been better off just doing anything except that. He'd have been better off tying his shoelaces up than doing that, really. Uh, Chuk Wuma now into Yonvier. All kinds of space for Dybala, and again, a wonderful save from Bignoli. I just, I don't know, it feels like we're up against it today. Chelsea are probably... They probably do have more goals than them. I'm thinking we're perhaps just slump back into counter-attack. Uh, I don't want to concede sevens and eights in today's game if we can avoid it. Capra now with the ball. Oh, he's lost it. Jesus, we are just not on form today. The players just seem to be playing badly. Like, in terms of... Chelsea are not just the better side. We're just not playing that well today either. Oh, my God. How is that not offside? Oh, it is. Kingsley Chukwuma. That's a fantastic name, by the way. Two changes for Chelsea. I'm tempted to make another one... Oh dear, what have we? Uh, what have we even got here? I'm going to bring off Capra and get House Hoseta on for a little bit, um, and maybe even yeah, Minardi on for Alexander because he's not had a good game at all. I'm going to make both subs here. I know it's a risk, but we've just got to try and get out of here without conceding too many more goals. Really, um, we probably should have stayed on counter, but I just thought mm, there might have been a chance. Isco cutting inside Dybala, and it's in the back of the net. Brignoli could do nothing about it, and that is five one. Chelsea are quite a good football team, um, is the conclusion I've come to after today's game. Thankfully, it is done on the head-to-head, -head, so, you know, it's not going to matter how badly we lose to Chelsea. It obviously, it'll matter to the morale, but, you know, it was worth a crack going for it when we had the chance, perhaps. And I think maybe the goal that we scored gave us, or gave me a little bit of uh, hope that perhaps we didn't need. Oh, we're, we're literally giving the ball away at every possible opportunity. They're not closing down. Dybala, Chelsea have got... Why are we... I'm on counter-attack now, and yet we had... Ugh... Oh, 
cleared away again. We had a lot of players up the field there, guys. You've got to be careful with that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if we could nick one more goal. Maybe get Di Placido the sort of token goal because he's not really had much of the ball tonight and had much of a chance. Here he is. He's on the ball now. He's got support coming up. How Serta, there's men arriving. Garcia knows how to pick a pass out. Can he get a ball in? He can. Back post and Zivkovic couldn't quite get on the end of it and Duran Duran is able to make the save. And I don't know if that was actually the highlight or not or whether uh, Chelsea are going to go straight on the other end and score now, which seems likely. Uh, Garcia, there's a little bit of space if he can knock it through the channel, but unfortunately Di Placido came too deep and oh he's in he's in space here Di Placido and he's in the back of the net and there is the goal <laughs> Chelsea 5 Roma 2 Marcelo Di Placido has scored in every single match for us so far so there's a lot of positives in the way we've started this year in the sense that our new big money striker has scored six goals in his first five matches and have scored in every single game he's played in so far he clearly has the goal scoring touch and I think a full season with us he could really be an absolute dynamo so 5-2 uh, could have been a lot worse I suppose um Maybe we should have stayed on counter. Who knows? Point is, uh, another goal for Di Placido, though, is at least going to keep him in good form. If nothing else, it proves that he's still got it. Don't let them score a sixth goal, though. Chuck Warmer, he's gone to... Yeah, there we go. I was going to say, he went a little bit too wide. This has been quite a long game, it seems. Um, so I do apologise for that if the episode has gone a little bit too long. Chelsea 5, Roma 2. Um, Chelsea are going to win this group out of canter, it would seem. They were disappointing, but at the same time, Di Placido actually got an assist and a goal in today's game and got a 9 overall. So even in a game where we play badly... He was still fantastic. He did what he did, and he did it well. The chance came, and he took it. And I think if he does that this year in the league, he's going to get himself at least sort of 25 league goals, I'd like to think. That's the hope, anyway. Uh, but only time will tell if that's actually going to come true. So, um, in the next episode... Wow, some big wins in there as well. We're going to be doing the game against uh, Levski Sofia, which is a potentially a winnable game. Now... That is actually on the 10th, uh, 20th of October. So there's quite a few games to play in between that. We've got Atletico at home as well in there. So, you know, it's, it's going to be quite a few games to play. If put it that way. So it's going to be quite a long one, I'd have thought. So guys, if you like what you're seeing, please do drop a like on the video. It'd be great if we could get it to 150 likes, even if even though we did lose today. But Placido is having a great time so far. And I'm really enjoying his work. And if you'd like to even more than that, please do subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and from the shadows in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for what is going to be very important actually the game against Levski because that's going to decide we need to win them home and away to make sure that we get ourselves through uh, in third place and I don't actually remember it I think Levski actually got a draw with uh, Atletico so they may not be the pushover that we think they are so I'll see you guys in the next episode thanks for watching bye bye